Hello, and welcome to another installment of Dear Celestron. I'm Lance Lucero, Product Manager of Astronomy, and I'm here to answer your questions. Our question today is how to balance a German equatorial mount. I'm going to demonstrate that here on my CGXL, but I want you to know that this procedure can be done with anything from an entry-level equatorial telescope all the way up to our full-size 14s. To balance a scope, you first need to get it set up as you would be completely using it, whether it's visual. In this case, I have it set up with, uh, with a camera and my guide scope uh, for imaging. But the trick here is you should have it, in order to balance it correctly, it needs to be set up exactly how you're going to use it. So all the accessories you could have attached. If you're going to have a dew shield, put the dew shield on. Um, I would recommend doing it with the cables installed because the cables do add a little bit of weight to the camera. Uh, but for this particular demonstration, just to make it easier and uh, not have the cables in the way, I figured I would just demonstrate without. So the first thing you're going to do is get your scope to where it is set up with the tube directly above the mount, pointed north, if you will, uh, for basic polar alignment. Um, what you want to do now is loosen the declination clamp and turn the scope slightly and let it go. Automatically, you're going to tell with all the extra weight that I put here on the back, it's clearly back heavy and needs to be moved forward in order to reach the balance point. So carefully holding the handle on the back of the tube, you can, I generally put my shoulder up against the tube to, just to give it something to, to hold against. Just gently loosen the hand knobs, slide the tube forward. Lock it down again, and then attempt to do it again. Now you'll notice right here, that seems to be a really good spot for it. Uh, I'm not getting any motion when I let it go on either side. Always test it to the left and the right, just to verify that when you let it go, it stays. Now you're properly balanced in declination. So go ahead and put that back so that it's basically facing north and lock down your clutch. Now. To do the right ascension axis, you're going to loosen this. You're going to pull it over to the side and let the counterweight go, and you'll see that I'm obviously counterweight heavy. Um, so the trick here is to move your counterweights closer and try it again. Okay, it's a lot slower that time, so we're going to move it a little bit further up. And now we have a nice little slow drift here. Uh, next step is to fine tune that. We're going to bring it up just a little bit more. Obviously, we don't need to move it too much. We don't want to make it go the other way. Let it go, nice slow drift downward, switch it to this side, let it go, and you should be good. Now, that should be pretty well balanced. Uh, it'll make your motors track a little bit easier, uh, less pressure on them uh, when you're pushing a balanced load uh, from your, uh, your central axis here. But the one thing that everyone seems to forget, it's very easy to forget, is uh, you want to make sure that you are not perfectly balanced in right ascension. I know that sounds weird, it sounds backwards, but it's absolutely true. The reason for this is gear backlash. Your gears are pushing in one direction, and as your mount does its motion, as it slowly tracks from east to west, you're gonna find that the motors are pushing against the weight of the tube here. But if there's any slight imbalance and you flip to the opposite side, your gears are now going to be pushing against the opposite side, holding it back. You want to avoid this. So we avoid this by changing your balance depending on where the tube is pointed. The easiest way to remember is to make it east side heavy. So if the tube, when you happen to be observing, is off in this direction on the east side of the mount, then you want to make the tube heavier. That means you're going to get the counterweights and you're just going to slide it up very slightly, just to give it a slight imbalance so that the tube is heavier than the counterweight side. Midway through the evening, 
when you've done your meridian flip and your scope is now on the west side of the mount, you will need to counter that by bringing your counterweight the opposite direction and making it a little heavier on the counterweight side. This again keeps your gear mesh constantly in, this, uh, in the same direction and uh, will prevent you from getting any tracking errors due to that problem. So uh, it just helps the, the motors uh, do its job with the tracking. Now I have a lot of different setups that I use, both for imaging and for uh, visual. Uh, but for my imaging setups, the things that I put on the scope generally tend to remain the same night after night. So I cheat a little bit, and what I do is I'll go ahead and balance it the first time and get everything set up. And once I have the counterweights where I want them, I will take a Sharpie and I will basically draw a line around where it meets the top of the counterweight. I'll also make a notation because um, you will have a different, like say for example, you're using a uh, F7 reducer, uh, your balance point's gonna be in a different place. So I mark it F10, F7, and uh, F2 when I'm shooting uh, with the uh, faster uh, assembly. I find that to be the easiest way to get back to your balance point uh, on repeated nights, uh, say you're setting up in different locations uh, and uh, you want to just be able to do it quickly. Uh, that is the easiest way I found. Uh, not only can you do the top, I also put one on the bottom for the bottom counterweight. Um, again, just to make sure that it's repeatable and I can see it from either side. When you're doing this for sliding the tube up and down, um, you could have a lot of little marks on your tube. Um, I actually mark them off, uh, like take for example my guide scope. Um, there's pieces of tape. Uh, the tape right here shows me exactly where this bracket should line up so that I'm consistent every time I slide this on. Because obviously your balance point's gonna change. If you slide uh, your uh, guide scope forward or backwards, it changes the balance point of the whole optical tube. So do the same thing, uh, except what you do is you put small marks down under here on your dovetail bar. I know a lot of people don't like to mark up their scopes, uh, but to be honest with you, it is so handy to do, and it's just reference lines uh, that you can uh, make it repeatable every single time with consistency, and uh, just makes whole life a whole lot easier. Well, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, again, if you have any more questions for Celestron, please go ahead and hit us on social media with the hashtag Dear Celestron. Um, hope you have uh, clear skies and uh, talk to you later.